There have been many champions throughout boxing's long history, however not all of them are equal. There are some who maintained their champion status for years to come, and others who quickly lost their title after just one fight. However, one such fighter stands out greatly among all of them, and that is none other than Floyd Mayweather Jr. Living a flamboyant lifestyle and partying almost every day, one wouldn't expect someone with such a lust for the nightlife to be one of, if not the greatest champion to have ever stepped inside the squared circle, but here is Floyd today. He stands not just as a world champion, but THE world champion, amassing an incredible record of 50 wins and zero losses. And yes, while there may have been others who have had a win streak just as long or longer, Floyd's win streak was perhaps against a much higher level of competition. But before we take a look at how he got to where he is today, we first need to take a look back to his past to better understand what made him so special. Floyd Mayweather Jr. was born on February 24, 1977, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. However, even before he was born, it was as if his path was already laid out carefully for him. His family was no ordinary family. His father, Floyd Mayweather Sr., was a welterweight contender and fought the likes of Sugar Ray Leonard. His uncles, Roger and Jeff Mayweather, were also boxers and fought big names as well, such as Pernell Whitaker and Oscar De La Hoya. Coming from a family that was so deeply embedded in the sport of boxing, they would all help lay out the blueprint for Floyd to achieve where they failed. Despite this advantage, life still wasn't easy for a young Floyd. His mother struggled with substance abuse, and his father spent most of his days in prison during Floyd's formative years. However, through sheer grit and determination and the help of his uncles, Floyd would push past his limits to get out of this environment and make a name for himself through boxing. Even early into his amateur career, Floyd was already finding success. By the age of 16, he had already won multiple Golden Gloves titles and in several different weight classes as well. However, his amateur career would take him far beyond the country of America, and he would go on to find success internationally as well. The peak of his career came in 1996 when he represented the USA at the Atlanta Olympics. He would go on to defeat Artur Gavorgian of Armenia comfortably and then face Lorenzo Aragon of Cuba a fight which really tested this young version of Floyd. A fight that is often overlooked in Floyd's career due to it being in the amateurs, but nonetheless still one of his toughest challenges. A true clash of styles. The slick American style of Floyd versus the hypnotizing Cuban footwork of Lorenzo. After an arduous battle, Floyd came out the victor, and this would also mark as a significant event in American boxing because this was the first time in 20 years that an American had beaten a Cuban in the Olympics. Despite accomplishing such a task, he would then lose to Serafim Todorov, an opponent whom he actually had an easier time fighting against.
This would be marked as one of the most controversial decisions in the entirety of modern Olympic boxing history. But despite how many fans believed Floyd won, in the record books he still officially lost, and this shattered a young Floyd Mayweather. Despite winning a bronze medal, Floyd would leave the arena in disappointment. You could see in Floyd's eyes how he never wanted to feel the pain of defeat ever again, and this would be the hallmark of his professional career. His extensive amateur career would lay the groundwork for his transition into professional boxing. However, this version of Floyd was still not the defensive master as we know him today. This was pretty boy Floyd and he was a hard hitter. In the early stages of Floyd's professional career, he was an offensive machine, but still had good defensive qualities. Not that anyone would know if it was right or wrong. They would like to see that jab going out there more. Well, he told us yesterday he did not want to slug. He wanted to box at all. Look at some of the numbers in round number one. Pretty Boy Floyd would run through his early fights like a knife through butter. And, and then just plays it smart. He would throw the jab, he would throw the jab, and score points all night. We'd like to see a lot more patience being displayed by Mayweather. Knock down, so. knock down. His first significant victory was over Hinato Hernandez, and this would also be the first time he won a world title. Floyd would use his superior speed, high ring IQ, and technical prowess to slowly dismantle Hernandez. Keep your left jab moving. Make him stop and think. Floyd has He was concerned about whether he would get the close one in Mayweather's hometown. So thinking and scratching here and trying to find some kind of attack. Landing sharp jabs and combinations while at the same time defending himself from Hernandez's punches. Backed up against the ropes, just as Floyd told us he would. And Floyd... Agreed. Yes, I have. To allow Miguel to have a proper set. Well, I mean, Diaz has world champion. Even this early into his pro career, one could already see something truly special in him with even big names like George Foreman giving him praise for his natural ability. I think Mayweather may be one of the best natural fighters around. Natural because he does it just like he's walking down the streets. No strain. Generally, it takes years to get a fighter to do the things that he's doing. Despite Hernandez being a veteran of the game, it was Floyd who looked like the more experienced one in there. Establishing dominance early and using his jab to keep Hernandez off balance. He One-sidedly, too. Stat numbers coming into the battle. Landing clean shots that affected Hernandez and making Hernandez constantly miss. Six. Six punch combination. Two counter punches. Trying to lead. Follows him around. And he's in. And he has to make the fight. Not following him. You go on his left side and make him go in the opposite direction. The culmination of all of this would eventually lead to a TKO in the eighth round. And Floyd would attain his first world title. He's going to turn to referee Jay Nady and say that's enough. Rudy Hernandez stopped. Realizing he just won his first world title, Floyd was in tears. And this would serve as a pivotal moment to land him even bigger fights in the future. All right, rather his uncle Jeff and his father Floyd Sr. both rushed to the middle of the ring to embrace Gennaro Hernandez. A proper show of respect for a great champion who was beaten by a younger, better fighter. Throughout his first 24 wins, he won 18 of those by knockout or technical knockout. A nice man. That kind of speed. So, this man is very fast. And trainer Nelson Lopez ends it. Throws in the towel. At one minute and six seconds of the night. And perhaps his most brutal display of offense was against Diego Corrales. Once again, Floyd would come in here as a heavy underdog. Diego was highly regarded in the boxing world and was also undefeated, holding a record of 33 wins, 27 of them coming by knockout. Not only that, but Diego was the much bigger man and known for his power and aggressive fighting style. He has now changed the point where he may very well need a knockout. With a minute 35 to go, he's got a long way to go. Corrales coming back after being on the canvas twice here in the tenth. And Castillo steps back. Corrales winning. Castillo's in trouble. Leak steps in and the fight is over. Despite
Despite all of these things going against Floyd, this would remain to be one of, if not, his most dominant performance of his entire career, absolutely dominating Diego and knocking him down five times before Diego's corner finally stopped the fight. Punch in box. Corrales has not used the jab all night. And the second. 20 seconds left. Two good shots. This fight further showed just how special Floyd is, and further cemented his reputation as one of the best in the sport. This pretty boy era of Floyd would soon come to an end, which would then lead to the rise of the prime version of Floyd that everyone knew of, Money Mayweather. I'll make it rain all day long. My name is Floyd. My name is Floyd. My name is Money Mayweather. My name is Floyd. My name is Floyd. My name is Money May. Not only was this a change of persona, but this was also a change of his approach to fighting. Gone were the days of his offensive output, but on the other hand, his defense went up tenfold. This all started when Floyd bought himself out of top rank, which enabled him to take charge of his own promotional effort and earnings. This new version of Floyd would first go up against Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar started strong and tried to bully Floyd with his inside fighting. Now he's got him in the corner. He fades, he nails him to the cut. And the crowd goes berserk. Very partisan Oscar De this round. And, and, and making this the round that would just to make a statement. He's Constantly pushing him against the ropes and throwing combinations. Sneaky right here. Well, he has to. However, Floyd remained composed, defending himself from the onslaught of Oscar's attacks. Floyd weathered the storm and eventually started to find his own rhythm. The ring being cut off by De La Hoya. You'll see the left hook by Mayweather. Then Oscar De La Hoya is on him. Whether these land a lot or not, he's firing that hook. The defense and accuracy was frustrating Oscar, and Floyd would continue to outbox him till the end. There he is, pot shot Oscar. Nice right hand. Good left. This is a very good round. Oh, he really walked Oscar coming in. Yeah, he did. After this fight, Floyd would go all in on his new persona, and it was then he really became what we know of him today. He would live a more flamboyant and flashy lifestyle, constantly showing off his wealth and love for money through social media. For many other boxers, this would have been the end goal. Attaining financial freedom would have caused many others to become lazier towards their training. However, for Floyd, it was the opposite. He, in fact, became even hungrier and got even better. It's 1 a.m. I'm going for my third workout. Do I want to go to the gym? Uh, absolutely not. I'd rather, you know, lay in my house and sit in the movie theater and watch movies. But, you know, to be the best, you got to work overtime. To be the best, you got to work overtime. That same drive he had all those years ago never disappeared, and this would be evident in all of his fights throughout the rest of his career. Floyd would go on to have high-profile fights each time he stepped back in the ring, defeating the likes of Ricky Hatton, Marquez, Mosley, Canelo, and his most high profile of which, that shattered pay-per-view records, Manny Pacquiao. You see what separated Floyd from everyone else? is that he was neither the fastest nor even the strongest. He even had brittle hands, so he had to be careful with his punches. What Floyd had was the highest fight IQ in all of boxing, and the ability to adapt to any situation, as well as incredible defense. I can size the guy up as long as a person walk in the room. That's my specialty. So I'm able to win. I can size you up instantly and say, oh, he's a B fighter. Or once the bell ring when you come out, I do the same thing to you over and over and over again until you catch on to it. Once you catch on to it, I move, I do something different. If you catch on to that, I do something different. Then I go back to what I was doing the first time and mixing them up. His innate understanding of boxing gave him a big edge over his opponents, making them miss like amateurs 
and being able to anticipate a punch before it's even yet to come. His ability to adapt also means there is no one true strategy that can beat him. If you have something that was working for you in the last round, Floyd will quickly adapt and you'll never be able to pull it off again in the next rounds. His Philly shell was an impenetrable fortress that nobody could ever figure out. In a sport where people often think it is the biggest puncher who will come out on top, Floyd was able to change that perspective and prove that boxing is not just about power and aggression, but also about intelligence and technique. His skills were so great that it even inspired an entire new generation to adopt a similar style to him. As much because of extending even beyond American boxers, but beyond just fighting he also showed the newer generation to seek greater control over their earnings, so that they can retire in perfect health and not kill themselves through the sport. I believe in just putting fighters in a position to get a monthly check for the rest of their lives. From growing up in a broken household to becoming the biggest pay-per-view star the sport of boxing has ever seen, Floyd is a testament to how far hard work and dedication can take you in life, and has also gone on to create generational wealth for his entire family. And all I ever wanted to do was put my family, my mother, my father, in a comfortable position. My dad is a millionaire. My mother, she's a millionaire. And the investments were, were for my grandchildren, not just my children. Yeah. A master tactician, not just in the ring, but also when it comes to business and marketing himself as a boxer. While Floyd may have many haters, one cannot deny the impact he's had on the sport and the newer generation of boxers. Definitely TBE.